Hi guys, Nisi Love Harmon here, What She Creating Enterprises, and today I will be doing and showing you the machine basics of a Brother XL2600i sewing machine. So let's get started. This is the manual hand wheel. So when you pull the hand wheel, uh, usually you pull it towards you, so that will be going to the left, and it pulls the needle up and down. That's like an air vent. And then this is where you put the attachment piece of the foot pedal. So that's where you attach the foot pedal here. And then this is the on off switch. This is the foot pedal. This is what you push like a car um, to allow the sewing machine to go and move forward. On the back, you will see the presser foot lever. So this puts the presser foot down and then you can put it back up. And then on the box, it has your machine serial number, model number, and all that good stuff. Where you can carry your machine. So if you ever need to pick it up, that's where you put your hands and you can carry it um, to and fro. Okay, so this is the bobbin winder. So when it's time to put thread on your bobbin, you will put your empty bobbin here and click it. And then we would go through the motions of threading the bobbin. So the bobbin winder is used when threading the bobbin. This is the spool, the thread, the spool holder. Okay, so you can make it go down or up depending on the length of your uh, thread. So this holds the spool of thread. And then this is an extra thread holder, but I don't have a lot of the attachment pieces for this machine. But if I did, I would put the extra uh, spool that probably comes with the machine in that particular place. These are guides that tell you how to thread the um, bobbin. This is the, the stitch width dial so you can either have your stitch short at zero or you can have it wide um, i would say narrow at zero and wide at four so if you're doing like a zigzag stitch you could put it all the way up to five to make it the widest and but if you're sewing on a straight stitch you would keep it at zero this is the stitch the tension dial you use this when working with the thread tension you want to make sure that you keep it between three and four you see that line there that's the manufacturer telling you oh well this manufacturer says to keep it between three and five so i'll usually keep mine probably about almost at four or something like that you don't really have to mess with this guide until you start switching stitches or if you have an issue with uh, with your stitch tension, then you will work with this dial. This is a guide to how to thread um, the bottom. And then this mechanism here, you would use this to help thread your machine as well as this circular piece is used to help thread the bottom. Like I said from the beginning, this is the hand wheel. So if you move it towards you, it makes the needle go up and down, okay? This is the stitch selector dial. So if I look here, I have one through 13 regular stitches, which is like a buttonhole stitch, a straight stitch, zigzag stitch. You may use these for doing like blind hems or other zigzag stitch and designs or whatnot. So one through 13 are regular stitches. And then where it says SS, that is for stretch stitch. So if you're using knit, um, you would use, you could use stitch numbers 19, I mean, not 19, 14 through 25. So if you want to, um, so if I want to do a straight stitch, I would put it on, this is the little dial here. So I would put it on two and I would do my um, number two stitch. If I want to do stitch number 19, which is a stretch stitch, I have to turn my dial here to SS. And then I will put it on 19. So that's how you would use your stretch stitches. Now, this is the stitch length dial. So like I said, you can put it on stretch stitch, but you can also make your stitch short or long here. Um, zero through one is usually for buttonholes. And if you're doing a regular straight stitch, then I will put it on three or between three and four. If you want to do a um, a basting stitch, you could put it on four. So 
this mechanism here is the buttonhole adjustment a uh, fine adjustment knob so if you want to make your buttonhole like wider or more narrow so you would take a screwdriver hence i have like a short screwdriver here you would insert your screwdriver and either go to the the left or the right um if you want to increase or decrease that's an option for you over here if you look closely you have the guides that tell you um, how to thread your machine. So there's two, three, four, five. This is the thread take up lever. You see that silver thing here? That's the thread take up lever. So when you are threading the machine, you will have to pay attention to that. If you look to the side here, this is a thread cutter. So it, once you finish like sewing your stitch, you will take your um, your thread and just put it there and it'll cut the thread for you. This is called the presser foot. So this is what you use to hold the fabric in place while sewing. This is a reverse stitch. So sometimes you wanna reinforce your stitch. So you will go backwards first and then forward. So that's the reverse stitch button. This is the guide as to how to put the bobbin in the bobbin case. You wanna put the presser foot back on, you would use this lever here. Oops, this lever here puts the presser foot up and pushes it down. So I want to Put the presser foot back on i take the lever and i go down and clamp it and it comes right back up there's your sewing needle here that's your sewing needle this one has an automatic threader so it's right here and you would use that you know if you don't if you have trouble threading the needle then um you push that down and you put the thread through and it helps to thread the needle. I'll do a separate tutorial on that one. And then this one is for buttonholes. So when you're doing your automatic buttonhole, you will use this particular um, lever or button. This is called the needle plate. And as you can see, it has measurements on it. So if you're sewing an allowance of five eighths, which is normal, then you would sew your fabric along that line or at one inch or um, an inch. And, and it also has centimeters on here, which I have not seen that um, previously. So it has different lengths on here if you need assistance with how, how long or how wide you're sewing allowance should be. This is the guide to how to insert your bobbin when needed. If you, this is called the bobbin case, but if you want to open it, you take, there's a lever here and you put your finger and move it to the right and it pops open. So this is the bobbin case here and then it encloses the bobbin. So here's the bobbin and your your top thread and your bobbin thread come together and create a stitch. So you have to have both of these in order to stitch and then put this back on. Okay, snap that back in place. Now, usually these machines have a storage um, compartment slash extension box, but I don't have that for this machine, but that usually comes with your sewing machine. In our next tutorial, we will be looking at inserting the top thread. Thank you for watching as I explain the basics of the Brother XL2600i sewing machine. Hope that this video helps. Give us video ideas. Follow us on social media. Subscribe to our page as well as give us some likes. And happy sewing!